And despite many personal advances, the issue of land ownership remained a particular thorn for the Zimbabwean people. People like Judas Chuma feel cheated. Is, is the government able to, to do a little more for you? Government did what today? The country's 1980 independence from Britain was conditioned upon the Lancaster Agreement, a constitutional mandate that nearly 80% of the land remain under white control for 10 years. And although Britain pledged to reimburse whites who voluntarily sold their land to the government, the agreement proved ineffective. Why did it take so long? It takes so long to... To come forth with this deal to, to, to compensate the country? In the respect of land they acquired for acquisition, it had to be on a willing buyer, willing seller basis. So you go to a farmer and say, we want your farm for, for a land reform. And if he says no, that's it. Says yes, fine, you acquire it. And, and th that way, you will not acquire land in a manner which would enable you to have, you know, entities of, of land knit together. So you could then uh, attach them to the communal area and get people resettled properly and efficiently. You'd get one farm here, another farm very far away. So we couldn't have made this until some, uh, uh, they, they said, 10 years had passed by, you see. So we had to buy, buy the Constitution. So we didn't tear up the Constitution, could have done that and said, ah, it's, 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 it offends against the interests of the, the people. But we said, no, let's bide our time. Ten years, well, we'll soon come by. However, in 1997, British Prime Minister Tony Blair stopped funding the Lancaster Agreement. Three years later, the Zimbabwean Parliament authorized the resettlement of thousands of landless blacks on previously white-owned farms. What was the deal they reneged on, Mr. President? That, that uh, Britain would pay compensation. That is what we agreed upon uh, with Lord Carrington. They were also supported in regard to that by the Carter administration and America committed itself to substantial, to giving substantial amounts, as they said, uh, towards land reform. And this money could be used for purposes of compensating the farmers. What happened? We reached the 10 years and we amended the constitution. So uh, acquisition now had to be in the national interest. That's all. That was the, in the national interest. And if we decided land, uh, it was in the national interest that we acquire your land. Fine. Then we would work out what compensation you desired. And that naturally would be a burden for Britain to pay. We would, as we still are doing, pay you for the developments and improvements on your farm. That was our burden. But Britain had to pay the market price of the farm. And this is what uh, these guys reneged on uh, Blair, uh, number 10 Downing Street. And that's the cause of the quarrel. And we, we said, uh, if you renege on that, well, we cannot, we cannot ourselves pay that compensation, it is your responsibility. We will continue to pay the farmer compensation for the improvements that he has effected on the farm. Uh, but we will acquire the land. So, fine, keep your money. We will take our land. It's not just personal sanctions, as they say. That's very dishonest of them to say so. When they say uh, they are personal sanctions, what, what they do behind scenes is to go to countries and say, 
you were giving credit lines, please stop doing that. They even, in some cases, in, were intercepting, you know, our, the, the, uh, the ships carrying our oil from uh, Kuwait IPG or, and from uh, also Libya. They would actually send people to say, we, can, we will pay you, you know, much more than the Zimbabwe is going to pay you for this uh, uh, shipment. You see, and uh, that. But they, you know the United States has been uh, uh, very blatant about it. And the message out there to our um, uh, uh, partners was, was that uh, doing business with Zimbabwe was risky. So, uh, and also the interference with the international organization, IMF and the World Bank. And they would actually tell them not to do anything. We had a meeting of, of, of the two in, 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 in uh, Dar es Salaam. Both of them came to us and said, there is no way we can extend facilities to you without a nod from number 10 Downing Street and, and White House.